again, guys. My name is Bob Stewart. Today, we're going to talk about some automated systems every agent should have. And inside of this, uh, obviously, right, we're going to talk about some of these things that Brivity can do for you. So if you're a client, there'll be a, you know, you're already a Brivity subscriber. There'll be a few things in here I think that you'll hopefully take away just like, yeah, I need to go like put those things into play uh, sooner rather than later. Let's dive in here for a minute. So as we look at kind of everything that, that Brivity does, and the reality is this map, you know, we've added some things like, like automated uh, postcard marketing that's not even on here. There's like a new Brivity designer tool that does kind of this automated design process and allows you to build kind of one design that you can turn into hundreds of variations of that design. Those things aren't even on here. Um, what we do at a high level is um, give you a system around which to build your real estate business. And so at the center of that system or that ecosystem is the CRM. And on the left-hand side of this map is kind of how we get people into your database. Some of this stuff is stuff you guys do, right? Open houses or, um, you know, you take a listing, you, you've got signs that go out and hopefully we get calls or texts because of those signs. Now, we offer tools to help you kind of enhance any of those different ways that you might today be driving traffic into your CRM or people into your database. On the right-hand side is going to be kind of what happens once people come through the databases, we hopefully get them into a transaction. What we're gonna talk about today is kind of this middle piece, okay? This like, this idea that I've got people in my database. And by the way, Brivity can help you get people into your database. We've got lots of different programs for that and some of the tools that come with the Brivity platform are just designed for that sort of thing. Stuff like the open house app that we have that allows you to get people to register on an open house and drive that lead or that prospect directly into the database. But once they're in there, like what kind of tools and systems should we have in our business? Whether that person got in there because they, they looked at one of our postcards and texted in our, our call to action off of the postcard or whether they came into one of our open houses or whether they were a, a lead who had signed up on our website, maybe because we had, promoted a virtual open house that we were hosting, which we can do through Brivity. It doesn't matter how they get there. Once they are there, okay? Some of that might be people you already have in your world, past clients, sphere. Once they're there, what kind of things can we put in place to nurture this person until they're ready to either buy, sell, or invest in real estate? I mean, that's really the game that we play every day, right? We've, we're trying to meet new people. We're, we're potentially getting them added into our, our database. We call that a CRM, right? Your, your customer relationship management tool or client relationship management tool. But we get them in there and we've got to turn them into a, a deal, right? At the end of the day, we want to be on the right-hand side of this little map, right? In that little green box, right? High-fiving because we collected a paycheck, right? High-fiving because we helped somebody right? With the dream of home ownership. Okay. So let's, let's get in here and talk about some of the very particular kind of tools that we have inside of Brivity to help make this happen. So we, in, in our world, and when I say our world, um, I'm talking about Brivity clients kind of in general, and more specifically, I'm talking about the Ben Kinney team. And I don't know if you guys know who, who Ben is. If you're a Brivity client, there's a high likelihood you do. But Ben Kinney is our, is our founder, uh, still our CEO, and every day is in our business here supporting his own real estate sales business. So Ben has an expansion operation. They've got I don't know, 36 expansion teams throughout the United States and Canada who are selling a lot of real estate. Did over 3,000 transactions last year. Okay then they're doing it on the back of Brivity. And one of the things that we're doing every day is trying to make those teams more efficient. So when I say, you know, around here, I, I definitely mean all of our Brivity clients, but real specific to this, this highly functioning team in 36 different 
cities, right, of totally varied like market size and 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 demographics. We talk about the Brevity lead flow model. And what our lead flow model does is on the right-hand side there, basically it's going to bring leads in from wherever you have leads and get them all into one place. Okay, some of you guys, you know, you've got a leads from your old website and, and every once in a while your company's website sends you a lead and, and oh, you've got your listings on Zillow, so you get a lead from Zillow every now and then or maybe you pay for realtor.com, so you've got a, you know, a bunch of leads coming from there and you've got that old listings to leads site and your leads come from the, maybe you're a Dave Ramsey, like there's a lot of places that we could potentially have prospects coming into our world and one of the things that, that we wanted to make sure happened for our Brevity clients is that we could standardize that, that lead flow model, that no matter where that lead was coming from, we could get it into one place so we could put very similar systems around how we go about attempting to convert that person into that green box on the right side we saw earlier, right? A paycheck, high five. So here's what that looks like. Lead comes in and it doesn't matter where your leads come from. We can get them flowing into Brivity. We can do it through direct API connections to places like Zillow. We can do email parsing. We do that with places like realtor.com where they send you an email that says, hey, Kara, you've got a lead. And we take that email and we read it and we just write that, that contact right into the database. We can do it through a thing called Zapier, which basically allows kind of different systems on the internet to talk to one another. Or obviously, if it's coming from a Brivity product, right, your, web, your Brivity website, your, your Quickly, which is our text-to-lead service, it's going to flow into the CRM automatically. Now, when that lead flows in there, we've got to route it. Now, look, if you're here today joining us and Carolyn or, or Diane or Don, you're an individual agent, it's awesome, right? That lead's going to you. You're the only person kind of in the office to work that thing. But if you have a team, we can get those leads routed to the right person uh, based on some, some information we know about that lead, where they're looking, what their price range is, right? Are there any tags that come in with that lead? A lot of our products allow us when we go out and, and post something, let's say we posted a a, a link on Facebook, right? We can include a tag in there. So if somebody registers on that, we can fire that lead to a certain agent. Time of day, maybe you go oh, between, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, that's when the leads go to, to Fred, right? And on Thursday and Friday, they go, to, they go to Jill. So we can route that lead. Now, once that lead gets routed, what we need to be able to do is have some type of automated follow-up. That's what we're here talking about today, right? This idea that we can automate different aspects of our business and probably the most important aspect that we are automating is what happens when somebody new comes into our database. There's a lot, there are a lot of studies out there around like speed to lead, they would call that, right? You know, every 30 minutes that you wait to call somebody decreases your likelihood of getting in contact with that person by like astronomical amounts. Every 30 minutes, it's that much harder to get that person to now engage with you, whether it be answer the phone or, or reply to a text or. So we've created what we call auto plans, which is this ability to kind of put our our database, right, and the new people coming into it on some kind of a cadence of communication, including tasks that can automatically get set for you or the agents on your team to do something with that lead, texts that automatically get sent to that lead, or emails that automatically get sent to that lead. And I'm going to show you guys today um, kind of the, the text side layout for a plan that we call the 10 days of pain. If you are a current Brivity client, at the end, I'm gonna give you guys a link that you can use to go and download the Ben Kinney team, 10 days of pain, the, the most newest and freshest one that we've, we've created, where Ben and Jolene, who kind of runs the Ben Kinney sales organization, and myself sat down and, and crafted this auto plan. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through some of the text with you guys. If you're not a Brevity client, for coming to this thing today, I'm going to give you guys a PDF that's the, that's the entirety of all of the steps inside of the Ben Kinney 10 Days of Pain, including what do the texts say? What do the emails say? And so we'll give you guys at the end that, that document, that PDF that you can walk away with. So it, let's say you decide you're like, yeah, you know what? I listened to this, this clown for an hour. I don't think Brevity's for me. But I've got a system I use now, and, and I could do these things, right? I could create a plan of this nature. We're going to give it to you guys. Now, we can create these plans, right? And, and you'll, we'll see one here in a little bit, and you guys will all get access to the 10 days of pain. And it's a series of tasks, things for the agent to do, like call the lead, right? That's really the only tasks an agent has to do. And then there's a series of texts and emails that go out on a cadence over – about 14 days. I know we call it the 10 days of pain. It's just gotten more painful over the years. It's now 14 days. The 14 days of pain doesn't roll off the tongue in quite the same fashion. Now, these plans are there to automatically communicate with the client, but we also need these plans to be able to automatically fire or trigger, we call it, when a lead comes in based on some certain criteria because I'm going to guess you don't sit at your computer all day long, right? Like, all right, when's the next lead? Coming? Oh, there's a new lead. Assign a plan to it, all right? We've got to be able to trigger these things automatically. And so we can do that based on some different criteria we may know about that lead when it comes in. Like, where did it come from, the source, right? Because if it came from Zillow, we're going to say something a little bit different on that first day than we would say if that person came like from our website or if that person came into our open house, or if that person texted in off of one of our listings, all of those different scenarios are going to dictate that we say, or the system says, something a little bit different. Intent, are they a buyer or are they a seller? If they came from, from Zillow because they were curious about what their own house was worth, and they'd kind of raise their hand on that page, and you were the sponsored agent or whatever Zillow calls that for, for their zip code, you, you want to say something. You want your plan to say something different to a seller lead than a buyer lead that came from Zillow. And so we can trigger different plans based on intent or status or tag, right? So any of these different things can be used to say, look, if I have a, a new Zillow buyer lead, I want this plan to fire right away, right? When that new Zillow buyer lead comes into the system, fire this, fire plan A, my Zillow buyer plan. If a new seller lead comes into my, my system from my website, fire this plan. And, and inside of Brivity, and I'm going to give everybody today the 10 days of pain, there are some kind of pre-built plans for a lot of these different things. If you're a current client or you're, you're thinking about getting Brivity, and then once you do, you're going to be like, all right, what, what are the first steps in, in terms of which plans should I put into place? You should absolutely have one for any buyer leads coming from your website. And that's what this 10 days of pain plan that I'm going to give you guys all, the, the 2020 Ben Kinney team, 10 days of pain, it's for website buyer leads. I should have one for open house leads. And we have a plan like that. Quickly leads. I should have one. I keep saying quickly. Quickly is our text to lead service. And you basically get a keyword that you, you, you get a rider made for your, your listings. You stop using flyers. You start putting that rider out, and when people drive by, they've all, every, we've all got this thing close to us, right, our cell phone. We get people that text in about our listings because they're curious how much the price is, and they want to see the photos. We capture their cell phone number. We start a plan on them. It's, it's all text-based, right? There's no emails because all we have is a cell phone number for that lead. Valuation requests or website seller leads. If I have seller leads, I nurture those a little bit different than I'm going to nurture buyer leads. And then one or two of your, your kind of primary outside sources, whatever that might be for you, right? Zillow and realtor.com are, are very common ones. Another one we see a lot, is like Dave Ramsey. Whatever those other sources are for you, that, that you know, top couple. On any given team of ours, we have at a minimum six to seven plans just kind of right out of the gate that we know we need to have in there 
so that every one of those new leads that enters into our world starts being communicated with, with the right messaging based on where they came from immediately. Our plans start to talk to that lead that came into our world in the first two to three minutes. There's a couple of concepts here, like as you maybe think about building your own plans, if you're already a Brevity client or, or you think about adjusting this plan I give you guys. The first day, we're always going to send at a minimum three texts. There's a couple plans we have that send a fourth text that first day. And, and the, the kind of the, the process here would be first text is going to just address their query, address what they were doing. And I'll show you an example, right? Make an ancillary ask or offer, right? Based on what they were doing, is there something we can offer them or something we can ask them in addition to that first text where we kind of address their query? And then we use this concept of guilt. Um, and I'll show you kind of what that means here. So let's look at that first text. And again, I'm going to give you guys, in fact, let me do this right now as I'm kind of pulling up this first text here. So I'm going to give you guys two different links here, okay? The first link, um, which is the, the shorter one of these two, okay, info.brevity.com slash 10 days of pain. If you're not a Brevity client, go to that link. That'll pull, that'll allow you to, to get access to a PDF that's the entire layout of the 10 days of pain. If you are a Brevity client, use the second link. What that'll do is that'll, now you have to be logged into Brevity and you have to be, uh, an admin or an account owner, but that will pull in the 10 days of pain right into your Brevity account, which is cool because when you become a Brevity client, you can share plans with any other Brevity client. So we have thousands of other clients who've created really great plans and you guys can share those plans between yourselves and we share all of the plans that the Ben Kinney team uses. Anybody can ask for them, whether you want the Zillow plan we use or the Quickly plan or whatever plan it is. Oh, yeah. I need to share my links with everybody. So let's get it here. Thank you, Michael. He's listening. He's looking. He's watching. He's the only one. Everybody else is checked out. Thanks, Michael. There's your links, buddy. First one, the short one. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. The first one, the short one is the, the if you're not a Brevity client. The second one is actually going to pull the 10 days of pain into your Brevity platform account. All right. So first text, it just addressed the query. Hey, I saw you stop by my real estate website. Maybe I'd say, I saw you stop by our site, benkinney.com. If you were going to buy, where would you want to live? Like we're just engaging them based on that query and asking some kind of a setup question, looking to get a response. Now we see these kind of placeholders in here and, and what those, I left those in there to show you guys, like we build this thing once. And then when Jim Smith comes in, the text that goes out says, hi, Jim. And when Patty Smith comes in, the text that goes out says, hi, Patty. And depending on who that lead got assigned to, the text is going to get assigned by their name, right? If the lead got assigned to me, it'd come out saying from Bob on the Ben Kinney real estate team. If it got assigned to Ashley, it'd say Ashley on the Ben Kinney real estate team. Now, somewhere, again, depending on which plan it is, between 15 and minutes and an hour later, we're going to send a second text. Now, the way that that these auto plans kind of build out and stack up. If they reply to the first text, it pauses the rest of the plan and nothing else happens because our goal with that thing was to get them into communication with us, get them to reply, be able to start to step in now, you the agent, and start having a real conversation with them. But if they don't reply to that first text, which happens, right? They might be like, wait, who's this? What? I don't know. I'm not ready to talk to this guy just yet. 15 minutes later, an hour later, However long you set it up, I think of the default in this particular plan, the one I shared with you guys, it's an hour later, we send a second text. Hey, are you looking to live in a new home? Sell, maybe invest in a rental? Maybe it's this question, you know, hey, did you want to set up a private tour of any of the homes you've seen today? If they were a text lead who'd been out in front of one of our listings texting in, that first query is gonna, or that first response is gonna say, hey, thanks for texting about our listing. Did you have any specific questions about that property? And then 15, 12, 15 minutes later, we're gonna say, 
hey, did you want to set up a tour of that house? Take a look at the inside, question mark? Address the query, ancillary ask or offer. In that case, because they were texted and they were out in front, we're going to do it a little bit sooner and the offer is going to be, do you want to see the inside of that property? If they were on our website, they might have looked at 50 properties by now. So that second kind of ancillary ask or offer is a little bit more generic. This third text gets a lot of response. Hey, this is Jim, right? I hope I don't have the wrong number. Now remember, they've gotten the first text. Hey, Jim, you're on my website. Where do you want to live, right? This is Ashley. Then they've gotten the second text. Hey, have you seen anything else on the site? Maybe you want to set up a tour soon, right? And he's ignored both of those first two. Third text, hey, this is Jim, right? I hope I don't have the wrong number. Or he might say, hey, Jim, you were on our website earlier, question mark. Guilt, right? Want him to feel bad for not replying to those first two texts. We're a real person now. We're not really because the system's doing these things and we could be having lunch with our honey buddy and, and, and Brivity's talking to the lead that just came in. Now, once he replies, you got to step in, right? We, we assault you with notifications, texts. If you have our app, which we have an app, right? That gives you a notification. Like we make it really easy and obvious for you to find that text when somebody replies. And then they just keep going. So I'm going to give you guys a sense for what some of these texts are. And again, I've given them all to you guys. Um, over the next 10 days, right, there's a whole variety of texts. Hey, would you like to go see any of the homes you saw online, right? My company has a, a, mortgage, a program which offers mortgages with zero lender fees. We are basically just loading up our quiver with all of our that kind of items of value. Right? We're just firing them day after day at this person. Now, if they ever reply... We step in at that point and, and we now start working that lead, right? We're never going to automate the process. It's never going to happen where the process is automated all the way to closing. You get in there and as an agent, you build rapport and that's why people end up working with you as they like you. These, these plans and this automation is just to get them to the point where they're like, okay, I'm ready to talk to Ashley. Our agents on our Ben Kinney teams are all trained and, and, and versed in this conversation. This is a conversation around appreciation and a mortgage interest deduction. And on an average price home in, in our market here in Washington, between mortgage interest deduction and appreciation, somebody buying the average price $350,000 home is going to be ahead about $24,000 in net worth at the end of one year versus had they been renting. We can sit down and have that conversation. So we use it as a hook to try to get people to bite inside of our auto plans. People normally visit my website for one or two reasons. They're looking for the perfect home or they're thinking about selling and wondering what their home might be worth. Which one are you? It's continuing to dig day after day, right? We, we call this like the uh, don't feel bad right? Because by this point, they've gotten six or seven texts from us, four or five emails. We've called a couple times and they've been totally non-responsive, but we just keep going. Maybe you're a current homeowner and you'd like to see what your, what your home is worth. And we'll talk about the tool that we could have for that person here a little bit. Then we just start getting like, hey, did I mess something up? Like I've never talked to this person, right? But, but again, this is guilt. People will go, no, 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 it was, it's not you, it's me. I'm just not ready yet. We send one on, it's like we do this on, on a day 11 or something. It literally just says, Jim, question mark. And people reply, oh, no, yeah, it's me. Sorry. I've been super busy the last two weeks as you've been sending me these texts every day, right? Again, while Ashley was doing, doing her, her regular job, right, out showing people homes and, and negotiating contracts, she can't be sitting at a desk all day long waiting for that next lead to come in or trying to convert that lead that came in 10 days ago that's been totally non-responsive, right? We would still be going after this lead 10 days later. This is our last text. We get a lot of LOLs out of this one. Like, I've, I've, I've by this point sent 10 or 11 texts, however many it is, right? I love texting, you, you hate responding. Now, eventually this thing ends and we get into this kind of second nurturing tool that we have that's, that's automated, in a high percentage of the cases, 
kind of depending on how somebody gets to your website, this can be automated from the very beginning, right? Where the lead comes in and they already have a listing alert in place. Sometimes you have to go in and set this thing up for a lead. If it's from our website, a lot of times it will be, it will be automatic. If it comes from Zillow, you might have to set it up for that lead, but it, it takes 30 seconds per lead, a minute, maybe tops. And then it just works forever, right? Till they buy or they die or they unsubscribe. Listing alerts. Now, guys, listing alerts, the, the first system, this kind of CRM website system that, that me and my partners ever built was back in 2002. And we had listing alerts. And they've been a thing in real estate essentially for as long as we've been putting listings on the internet. Now, we've gotten a little bit smarter over time. Like we do things now, like when we're sending listings to a buyer, we start asking them inside of those new listings, hey, do you have a house to sell? Right? We try to get people to raise their hand and say, yeah, I, I, I need to find a house to buy, but I also have a house to sell. Now, one of the things that, that like who should have a listing alert in your database? It's every single buyer prospect, period, always from the very beginning. And one of the things we see a lot in working with different Brevity clients, I've been working with people in this regard for 18 years. It's been a while since I was a real estate agent myself out doing the job you guys are doing, but I was that person at one time for a number of years. Most people will set a listing alert up after they talk to that lead on the phone. Hey, oh, hey, Jim. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're looking for homes in Bellingham between 350 and 450,000, and you got to have three bedrooms. Awesome. I'll start sending you some listings, and I'll check in with you in a couple days to see, see how things are going. The problem with that is just in real estate in general, because people like to look at houses, and they're not always ready to buy like right away. A lot of them don't talk to us in the beginning of their search. In fact, there's all kinds of statistics around the average amount of time somebody spends on the internet before they buy a home and also before they pick the agent they want to work with. If we don't start sending them listings from the very beginning, there's all these ways they could end up in somebody else's database. They could end up searching somewhere else. A lot of times we had kind of the nose lead in the beginning. We were the first one to know they were in there looking for uh, listings, even though they're looking for a, a place to buy, even though it might be nine months before they're going to actually buy that place. A lot of teams, a lot of agents wait till they talk to that person to set them up on the alert. We set every single buyer prospect up on day zero, right when that lead comes in. Really all you need to know about somebody is like, where are they looking and how much are they looking at? And oftentimes the types of inquiries you get into your business, right? It, the lead comes from Zillow. They, they were looking at a particular property and that property was somewhere listed at some price, right? It was a condo in Seattle at 500,000. So if we know something about that lead, oh, when they registered on our website, they were looking at a property in Bellingham at 400,000. We're going to use that and we're going to set a listing alert up whether we talk to them or not. This is really important because most of the people you're not going to talk to. Most of the leads you get in your world, it's really hard to get them engaging with you when they're nine months out, they're 12 months out. They're thinking to themselves, I don't want to bother Ashley right now. Like I'm not ready. I'm not ready to talk to an agent right now. I just want to look at houses. If we don't start sending them these houses so they're in their inbox every day, then they go look at houses somewhere else on Redfin, on Zillow. They go back to Google right? They go to the Facebooks, they, they click on some ad in their stream. So we got to get them listings. Now, sometimes I don't know. In fact, we work with a lot of people that, that like a bunch of you guys aren't Brevity clients right now. You're going to become a Brevity client. And when you come join and, and you, you sign up, you're going to bring a database with you from somewhere else. I'll bet most of you guys and gals have a database that has old leads in it and you're not even sure where they came from, what that person was looking at. And if you're going to be honest with yourself, you're like, I don't know anything about this lead. I don't even remember putting this in here. I know nothing. We will take big sets like that when people come on board with us 
and, and we'll either, you know, kind of instruct you or we've got a service. We'll actually help you do this. It's a very nominal amount and just go out and start setting up generic listing alerts. So we do this thing in, in Ben Kinney's business where when somebody in our markets, you know, like in our, in our office leaves the industry and this happens year over year all the time, right? There's tons of turnover in real estate. We will offer to buy their database from them somewhere between a buck and three bucks a contact to kind of depending on how, you know, how much quality is in there, how much data is in there about them. A lot of times there's nothing in there, but there's like a name and an email address or a name and a phone number and an email address. And so we will just go out and start setting up listings kind of in our general market. So it, that might be t Tacoma, Washington, 250 to 400,000. And we just start sending listing alerts on that criteria. And here's what will happen. If you do that to 100 people, I mean, you can literally grab 100 people out of the phone book, right? And phone books don't have email addresses, but you just grab 100 random email. If you just started sending listings to them, you're going to get like this. You will get a couple of people that are like pissed, right? Like, hey, you're spamming me. Like, what are you doing? And it'll be in all caps. And they'll just like reply like really angrily. But you'll get a couple of people that will say, hey, we're not looking in Tacoma. We're looking in Lacey. Or one person will say, can you stop sending listings at 250? We're only approved to 190. Or another person will say, can you only send us stuff with four plus bedrooms? Some of those people just say nothing. They'll just start coming back to our website. And we can see inside of our CRM when they come back. This is a great, like, the best thing that you can send buyer prospects to nurture them over a long period is automatic listing alerts, right? You, you do the work one time, it takes you 30 seconds or a minute, and it works for you for the next nine to 12 months as they're getting closer and closer to buying. Easily, the best thing we've ever built in my 18 years of building real estate software is this market report tool. Um, it gets the most interaction. It gets the most like come list me responses we've ever seen. And it gets the highest open rate and click through rates of any email marketing campaigns we've ever done. So what are market reports? Basically they allow us on your behalf to get the data from your MLS on actives, pendings and solds. And then we can send it to your customer, your client or your prospect so they can be updated and, and, and in the know on what's selling right around their house. Okay. We, we tell this ridiculous story. Who's who, uh, Annabelle? Who else? Um, who else is in this room? Annabelle, Daniel, Diane, Don. If you guys have a significant other, is there anybody in here that would like send them on a speed dating event? Like, can you imagine my wife gets home from work? Right. I'm like, honey, I got you tickets to the, the Seattle Center this weekend. You're going to go with your, your girlfriend, Lillian. Here, here's two tickets. You guys are going to go, and you're going to do a speed dating. It's going to be awesome, honey. You're going to go there, and you're going to find, like, there's going to be 50 eligible bachelors. They're all going to be super handsome, honey, with, like, the big square jaws and, like, big muscles and tan. I'm, like, pasty. Like, I don't know if you can see me here. Pasty. Like, go have a great time, honey. Oh, by the way, last thing, they're going to be rich, all of them. Like, huge wallets. They're barely going to be able to sit up straight in their seats. So that's why they're going to be kind of tilted when you go in to meet them all. Like, have fun, right? I hope you meet somebody great. Like, nobody would ever do that. That's right. Eli's like, no, I'm not doing that. But here's the deal, okay? Today, one of your guys' past clients, somebody in your sphere is driving home from work. And look, I get we're in this like COVID world. So maybe they're not driving home from work. Maybe they're like walking their dog out around the block because that's all we can do, okay? But they are, they've walked by or driven by for the last two weeks, a month, right? That for sale sign that's been out there in their neighborhood. Now today they walk by it and it's got a sold banner on it. They all have this in their hand. They are all sitting on their foot. It's in their hand, right? They're probably out looking at that instead of talking to their dog, right? They immediately want to know what did they sell for. I promise you, the people like the people in your database that own a home, if another home around them sells, they want to know what it sold for. So what are their options? Uh, they could call the real estate agent whose phone number's on the sign. They could go Google. They could go to Zillow. The fact that Zillow exists is proof 
that for years we sent our, our, our sphere on a speed dating event, a real estate speed dating event. We were like, I don't know, I can't. Like, if you want to know what the house down the street sold for, you got to go to Zillow. Like, Zillow literally exists because our MLSs didn't allow us to share this sold data with people. Don't send your clients on a real estate speed dating event. Don't make them go to Google and type, um, how much did 1 to 3 Main Street sell for? Or what home sales prices in in Seattle or, or just that they, they just have gotten used to the brand awareness of Zillow. And they just go to Zillow. Like, don't do that. They're going to end up in somebody else's database, right? They're going to end up in a database where somebody has like sexier marketing photos, like a, 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 a fake tan, right? And, and, and somebody that has a bigger marketing budget than you do, right? So that person's running ads on Google when they go type in in Google, like what did the house on one three main street sell for? You have to be the one delivering this information to them and they've got to know, oh, how sold? I'm going to Ashley's market report. I'm going to pull it up and I know it's on there because Ashley sends me everything selling right around my house. These get opened at like 38, 37, 38% open rates, which is like staggering. We're sending hundreds of thousands of these things across our entire you know, network of clients. They get opened at astronomical rates. It makes a lot of sense. It's this thing we could drip on people, right? Our past clients, our sphere, any seller leads we have in our world. We even use them on buyer leads. I'll talk about that in a second. Like when you're sending somebody an email and the headline of the email is like, what's sold around one to three Main Street and their address is one to three Main Street, it's almost impossible for them not to open it. So we send them to past clients, sphere, seller prospects, literally any homeowner in our database where we have an email address for them because we needed to send them the market report. And if we have their physical address, like they're getting a market report from us, guaranteed. Now, we also use these on buyers, right? And think about a buyer, okay? Especially in some of your guys' markets. I'm gonna use Seattle because it's just a crazy low inventory market. I think there's a lot of markets like that around the country right now, low inventory. So I've got a buyer who's getting listing alerts from us, right? Let's say it's a, it's a Monday and then they open their alert. And they're like, Ooh, honey, look, look at this house. I really like it. It's new. Look at that one. Wow. Tuesday, another one. Oh, look at this one, honey. Then what we do is once a week, we send them a marker report for that same area that they're buying into. It's automated. It takes us 30 seconds to set that report up. It took us 30 seconds to set the listing alert up. So they're getting list, new listings here every day. And then once a week on this side, we go, hey, you know that area you're looking in? Here's what's going on there right now. So let's say they were getting listings from us in Tacoma between 300 and 400,000. We would also have a marker report for Tacoma between 300 and 400,000. Because that listing they say on, saw on Monday, when that marker report goes out five days later, let's say, it might be pending. And if it's pending, it'll show on that marker report is pending. So that listing they favored it on Monday, on Friday, they see it's pending and they go, dang, honey, we, we can't wait. Like next time we see one we like, we got to reach out to Ashley because we don't want that market report to come in a week and see it's pending. Like we got to move fast. They start to understand what's going on in that market that they would like to buy into. I think we're good, Jake. All right. So When we set up market reports, we be as generic as possible. We don't use any criteria. A lot of people go and try to set one of these market reports up and they'll go, okay, I help my client buy their house. I know they live in a three bedroom, two bath. It's 2,300 square feet. And so I'm just going to send them properties that are just like theirs. I get that if you were going to comp their home, you were going to do a CMA. And by the way, Brivity has a CMA tool where we pull the data in from your MLS. We use this simple 555 method to help you price the property. It's super easy. If you were going to comp their property and do a CMA, you'd use three, three bath or three bed, two bath homes. Most likely, right? Maybe you'd use a two and a half and discount for that half bath or whatever. But and so what people do in their market reports is they basically like put the market report to a range like they were comping the house. The problem with that is when your client's out walking their dog 
and they see a three bed, one and a half bath. They don't necessarily know it's three bed, one and a half bath. They just know it's in their neighborhood. And it's got a sign out front that says that it's sold. They want to see what it's sold for. If we make the criteria too specific on a market report, they might go to your report and be like, what the heck, Ashley? Like, I don't see this three bedroom one and a half. I don't, I don't see this house on here. Well, because Ashley's only sending them the stuff that was three bedrooms, two baths. So we just make it wide open. Like literally every home, it doesn't matter if it's a million dollar home or a, a $50,000 trailer, and they live in a, you know, a $300,000 average house in that, we're going to show them everything selling around them. We just want them to, to know what's going on because they're nosy anyway. They want to know what the million dollar house sold for. I promise you they do. Now we just set the first one up and we go to a radius around their home that's wide enough. So there's about 15 to 20 active pending and sold properties in that first report, including a couple of solds, right? Just know we get enough range that month over month as that report goes out or every week as it goes out, there'll be activity inside of that range. So now that you've like done this stuff, right? Like what, what do you do? I've got listing alerts in place. I've got market reports. I've got these auto plans going out. At that point, the conversion aspect of your business becomes about like kind of skimming off the top, I would say, right? You, you could have hundreds or thousands of people set up on these listing alerts and these market reports. The ones you're most concerned about or should be most concerned about are the ones that are like doing something because of that. Coming back to the website and looking at properties, maybe looking at the same property multiple times over a couple of different days. We want to be able to focus in on those people and then take action on those specific people with spe and now we can have specific conversations. We have a past client that we can see looking at our market report with some frequency, looking at it almost every day. We might think, man, oh, they, they probably see this pending on here and you can see the market reports they see, right? Look, I bet they see that pending and they keep coming back every couple of days to see what it's going to sell for. So when that thing does sell, I should probably reach out to them because if that number's good, maybe they're thinking to themselves, honey, if they get 500 for this house, we are selling for 500,000. If that comes back at 515, like I should call. Them. Right? If I see somebody that was on my website today and they looked at a property, but oh, they looked at that property yesterday th two times as well. I build these stories in my head. I'm like, you know what happened yesterday at lunch? He got the print into his email, right? And he looked at it. And he thought enough of it that I can see in here later at 7.39 that evening, he looked at it again. That was probably when he went home and his honey buddy got home from work. He grabbed her and he was like, hey, honey, look at this one. And then the next day he looked at it again because he had a friend at work who he was like, hey, Jim, come here. What do you think, man? Look at this, look at this thing. It's only, a, it's only five miles from the office. What a price on that. Like I build these stories, but I can see all of that stuff happening in the back end of the CRM, right? When my business is all kind of running from one system, right? Where my website, my CRM, my market report to all this stuff is integrated together. I, I, I know what's going on in the database from all of those automated processes that I've put in place. We have a couple last ones I wanna, I'm gonna, I won't dig too deep into these, um, you know, we do leads at Brevity, right? If you wanted to get leads, we, we can do lead programs for you. We can do Facebook leads, you know, Google pay-per-click leads. We run app network. We can get buyer leads, seller leads, whatever. We've got another kind of avenue of, of marketing, of digital marketing. It's called remarketing or retargeting is another, another term for it. But basically what we'll do is we'll take your database and then we'll take anybody that like lands on your website, even if they don't register, and we will um, start following them around the internet with ads, reinforcing your brand and trying to drive them back to your website. It's called remarketing, right? And what it does, it just follows them around the internet. When they go to Fox News, they go to MSNBC, they go to ESPN, they go to CNN, they go to their local Seattle Times. You know, they're playing the Candy Crush game on their cell phone, right? It, we're going to just be serving ads up from you that makes them think, holy cow, this guy markets everywhere. Like he's on the Wall Street Journal, for goodness sakes. He, he must have an amazing business. Not so much. We just follow that one person all around the internet because 
you know, big, big, big data companies like Facebook and Google allow us to do this. And we've got a team that's really good at it. Right. So we, we do these kind of display ads all around, but just targeting that one person that was in your database, right? That one person has been looking at your market reports and kind of thinking about selling. We just kind of make sure that they never stop thinking about you. This is a way to automate, um, kind of the marketing of your business to the people that you have in your database, right? We spend a lot of time in real estate trying to figure out like, how do I get another lead? How do I get, get introduced to somebody new? We would suggest that you spend just as much, if not more time focused on the people you have and making sure the people you already have in your world are going to do business with you. Most of us spend way more time on the, on the former and, and the reality is the latter is where almost all of your business comes from people in the database already who've been in there for a long time. I mean, two thirds of the business in real estate comes from your past clients and referrals from your sphere or your past clients. It's two thirds every single year, year after year after year, buyer side and seller side business. This is the kind of thing that makes sure those people never forget about you and they're going to refer to you and they're going to work with you no matter how long they've been in that database. The last one I'll mention is our auto-generated listing postcards for just listed and just solds. So we've got a, it's called Brevity Marketer. Um, it, it takes a feed from your MLS and every time you get a new listing, we just create a postcard campaign ready to go for you automatically. You basically go in and decide how many people do I want to send this to? And you can do that based on the address of the property, we've got an algorithm that goes out and finds the best matching properties around your property to send your campaign to. Or you can go in and, and actually do the matching yourself. You can draw on a map and say, I want to farm this area, right? I just took a listing in Simiamu. I want to go and, and I'm going to draw a map around Simiamu and I'm going to send my postcard out. But I don't want to send it to everybody. I only want to send it to the houses that last sold for under 500000 and have sold in the last seven years. And you can make all these picks or you can just let our algorithm do it for you. In addition to the automatic you kind of just listed, just sold, you can do campaigns for anything. So you, maybe you do a campaign for what's your house worth or maybe you do a campaign for, I have a buyer, we need to list, you know, we, we need somebody willing to sell their house, right? Maybe you do this for your, your events or whatever. You can upload list, CSV lists of who you want to mail. You can pick using the draw tool on a map, or you can just let our, our algorithm figure it out for you. The postcards, right? The branding, it's all smart address targeting, all automatic. Now, here's the deal. If you're not a Brivity client, I already saw Don. He like raised his hand earlier. He's like, Ashley, can you call me? If anybody else wants to say like, I want to talk to somebody right now, raise your hand in the chat and I'll have Ashley reach out to you and she'll give you a call here today at some point. If you'd like to go and set up a demo kind of on your, you know, on your own time, you can go to brevity.com and right on the front, it just says, get a demo. Listen, if you do a demo with us and I, I want to put a hard disclaimer in here, we will give you Ben Kinney's listing presentation. Ben's, Ben's team listed like 1,500 properties last year using this listing presentation. And the year before they did 1,300 and the year before that they did 900. This, this listing presentation listed thousands of properties and we give it to you guys and it's editable and you can go in and put your own logo on it and, and in 15 minutes R and D and have like one of the best listing presentations in the industry. The problem or the challenge for you is without brevity, it's going to be mostly useless because the listing presentation is totally full of all of the different tools that we offer in Brivity and how they help us be more efficient in our business to help that seller get more money in less time. So if you go and you do the, the demo just to get to listing presentation, because people do this. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do the demo. And then they get there and they're like, hey, Mr. Sales guy, can you just give me the listing presentation? Like, that's really all I wanted. And we're like, yeah, sure, here you go. But it's useless. So I want you guys to understand that's the case, okay? If you're a Brivity client, what you can do, um, Annabelle, is go inside the Brivity CRM and there's a little question mark up there in the top. Click that little question mark and then you can search 
Ben Kinney listing presentation, and it's in there, and you can download it. It's right at your fingertips. Malavesh, hey, um, Ashley, I'm, you're paying attention here. Mala would be interested in, in getting a demo from you, so maybe you can reach out to Mala. Awesome, Annabelle found that thing. Listen, guys, here would be my, um, my, my close. Unless somebody has some questions, you guys, it looks like Mala Ashley's gonna reach out to you. If anybody else has any questions about Brivity, I, I do have 10 minutes on my calendar here to, to spend with you guys. Here's what I'll, here's what I'll say to kind of wrap up. Um, the guy that you see on the screen right there, like we are constantly improving Brivity to, to, to run his business. Now there are thousands of other businesses that are running off of the back of Brivity, including some of the the biggest ones in the, in the game, like they just released the, uh, the real trends, you know, kind of top, top list, right. For, for 2019 production, Ben's teams up there, they, they kind of misclassified him. They call him a brokerage, even though he's a team, which is really kind of crazy, but he's gotten so busy. Teams gotten so massive that they've Inman's classified him or real trends classified him as a brokerage, but he's still way high up the list. Right. Many of those top teams are running their business off of brevity. Okay. They, they understand the power of having so many of these tools kind of under one umbrella. Sean, how does the CRM compare to follow up boss? It's very similar. We've got lots of clients. In fact, Donna Reed, who runs our, our, uh, our success team and, and does a lot of our training came from follow up boss. Um, so we've definitely picked her brain and, you know, it's very similar. What, what I would say is that in addition to follow, we've got the IDX data, right? So you've got the website piece on the front end. You've got the, the market report tool. So we're sending the sold stuff. You've got the postcard automation. Uh, you've got a thing called Brivity Designer, which I didn't even talk about, which allows you to create hundreds of designs on one kind of layout. You know, from one layout, you just, you can relay the designs out, um, We've got the open house application on the front, right? I mean, there's all these things. Like, this is a – this is built by a guy who's still in real estate. Here's the one thing. I, go find another software company in the industry where the CEO, first off, gives you his cell phone number. You guys can all have Ben Kinney's cell phone number. Does trainings three times a week so you can glean the experience of a guy who's built an organ, you know, a team that sold 3,000 transactions – and they actually still use the product in their business, right? They're not, they haven't sold to a title company or a VC fund or, I mean, we're, we're in here. We, we, we say, I mean, we didn't make this phrase up, right? But we're eating, we're taking our own medicine in here. I actually work on a daily basis with our 36 expansion teams. I meet with every team once a month to make sure they're maximizing their use of brevity. It's something we offer to you guys. Once you get into Brivity a little ways, you've been in there a couple of months, you've kind of started doing some of the stuff that we suggest. I'll even go in and do audits with people's accounts to kind of make sure that they're at the top of their game. All right, Don, Eli, Jake, Sean, Mark, some of you guys, I appreciate you joining me today. You spent an hour with me. I think you owe it to yourself to go in and get a demo with Ashley or Jake or one of the guys behind this, one of the guys or gals behind the scenes. See if this is a fit for your business. Ask them questions. Have them show you the, the back end, Eli or whoever, uh, Sean. So you can kind of, if, you, if you're very familiar with Follow Up Boss, you can kind of see some of the similarities and some of the differences. You guys, uh, most of all, have an awesome rest of your week. Okay, on behalf of Ashley and Mikey and Samantha who kind of make these things happen and, and are the reason you guys are here, my name's Bob Stewart. Hope you guys learned something. I hope you kind of understand a little bit more about what Brivity has going on. We'd love to, to see you as a client. Have an awesome rest of your week. Uh, be safe out there. Wash your hands. We'll talk to you guys real soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.